I like the way God makes hurricanes happen. They blow entire villages into the fucking ocean and everybody fucking dies! Video game myths debunked. The nurses from Silent Hill 1. Yeah, the sexy nurses. They became a Silent Hill staple. But I hate to break it to you. These nurses were never supposed to be in every single game. As a Silent Hill fan knows, Silent Hill, it plays with your mind, it feeds off your fears. The nurses in Silent Hill 1, the very first game, were supposed to be based on the hero Harry Mason's sexual frustration. That's what they were supposed to be based on. But sex sells, and guess what? The nurses are in tons of Silent Hill games because they have boobs. But they were only supposed to be in Silent Hill 1. They were just based on Harry Mason's sexual frustration. Video game myths. We all know Mario as the face of Nintendo, but was he really the face of Nintendo? Let's find out. The answer is no, and this is where he got his start. Mario, the lovable plumber, Mario actually got his start in a Donkey Kong game. Yes, Mario got his start in the 1982 Donkey Kong. And his goals were very similar as they are today. Mario would start down there and the princess would be up there and he had to save her. But Mario wasn't known as Mario. The Nintendo R&D team named him the Jumping Man. He also was in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out as the ref. So yes, Mario started out in Donkey Kong. Video game myths, and this pissed a lot of people off. In the early 2000s, Ubisoft released a trailer for a game that pretty much went nowhere. Assassin's Creed. And in the E3 demo, you can see the hero is wearing a crossbow. This had a lot of players excited. All these angry gamers, they were going to kill people with crossbows, they were going to kill people with daggers, everything under the sun. But then when the gamers popped in the game, they found out there was no crossbow. Yep, Ubisoft never put a crossbow in the game. Ubisoft even went on to say that they wanted to keep the game as historically accurate as possible and that there was no crossbow. Sorry. No crossbow. It was just a myth. Video game myths debunked. In 1994, Nintendo released a brand new game. Earthbound. And today, Earthbound is known as one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Tons of controversies and tons of myths have followed this game for years. But right now, I'm going to debunk the biggest one of them all. See, in this game, you fight a very scary boss who goes by the name Gygus. Now, it's always been a theory on what Gygus is, but here's the biggest myth of them all. This is where it gets kind of creepy. Gamers have always believed that you're fighting a fetus. See, there's the head, the nose, the body, and that you're preventing Gygus from being born. But the creator himself said, no, this is just a rumor, not true. Can you explain Pyramid Head, please? Well, sure I can. I only got 60 seconds, so let's make this fast. Video game myths debunked. Pyramid Head, another character that wasn't supposed to be in every Silent Hill game, and this is him explained very quickly. You see, Pyramid Head and James Sunderland are actually very connected. James Sunderland, another hero that's actually really messed up in the mind. You see, Pyramid Head is actually James Sunderland's, and here it is, haters, guilt for letting his wife Mary die. That's what he is. He believes that he deserves to die for letting his wife Mary die. So this sick little guy right here, Basically, he uses Pyramid Head to punish him for his wife's death. That's all Pyramid Head is, is his punishment. Can you explain Mr. X? Well, I can try. Mr. X is just a tyrant, just like in every other Resident Evil game. But unlike the tyrant in Resident Evil 1, Mr. X is a lot more special. Just like in Resident Evil 1, Mr. X is made from a human. Umbrella even gave Mr. X his own code because they thought he was going to be the ultimate weapon. See, unlike the tyrant in the first game, Mr. X doesn't suffer from as much brain function loss from the virus. It actually makes Mr. X a way more effective killing machine. He can think, he has emotions, anger, all that. When you shoot off his hat, he gets angry. When you do damage to him, he makes facial expressions like he's pissed off. 
And unlike the Tyrant in one, Mr. X can be programmed to kill certain targets, Leon and Claire. Umbrella even gave him a trench coat and a hat so he can fit in with normal society even though he's seven feet tall. Hope this helps. Video game myths debunked, and I've been waiting to do this one for a while now. In 1996, Edios released the smash hit, Tomb Raider, featuring Laura Croft. Basically, to put it simply, Laura Croft was every virgin's wet dream. So this started many rumors, and I've been waiting to tackle this myth for a long time. The notorious Laura Croft nude code. People wrote fake cheats for this, fake forms, everything. It was the talk of the generation that you could see Laura Croft naked. But it was just a myth. The code never existed. Edios even went on to say, stop it. There is no nude code, you perverts. Get a life. Video game myths debunked. In the N64 classic, Perfect Dark, there was a myth that drove players crazy. You see curious gamers that started to search around, started to find out that you could find blocks of cheese. You could find this in a toilet, in windows, everywhere throughout the game. So many rumors started about what these blocks of cheese really were. Some players believe they're a hidden item. Some players believe that they're an unfinished quest. Some players even believe that they are supposed to lead to a secret level. Perfect Dark, one of the greatest N64 games of all time, had so much content in it, was something left out? No. Many years later, the level designer came and spoke up and said that these were just his signature for each and every level. How anticlimactic. They do nothing. I've been waiting to tackle this video game myth for a long time. This is probably the most popular video game myth ever created. It is known by hardcore gamers and recreational gamers alike. And I'm obviously talking about the Madden curse. The Madden curse believes that any player on the cover of Madden will suffer a career ending injury or some kind of depletion in performance. But some players on the cover of Madden had great seasons, but we never hear about them, do we? Being on the cover of Madden and getting hurt the next year is just a coincidence. It's just a myth, right? UFC cover curse next, please. Sure, let's do this. Video game myths debunked. The UFC cover curse is just a little bit more painful than the Madden curse, and I'll tell you why. It seems as though something very unfortunate and very painful happened to all these fighters. After being on the cover, not even the great Conor McGregor could beat the curse. After this, he suffered a submission loss. And the once thought unstoppable, unbreakable, unbeatable Ronda Rousey got beaten so bad she had to retire. Oh, and it doesn't stop there. After being on the cover, John Jones, one of the best up and coming fighters of all time, had to basically give up due to substance abuse. And he was stripped of the title. So long story short, when EA asks you to be on the cover of something, say no. Thanks a lot, follow for more. The Shadow of the Colossus myth. Shadow of the Colossus, one of the greatest PlayStation games of all time. Video game myths debunked. As you know in this game, there are 16 Colossi and there has always been a myth that there's a 17th. Gamers thought that you could find this Colossi by changing the difficulty. Normal, hard mode, super hard, all this crap. Many gamers even spent hours and hours roaming the lands trying to find the 17th colossi if you beat the game a certain amount of times he'll show up if you do all these button combos and travel to certain areas you'll find them stop it there is no 17th colossi it's just a myth video game myths debunked oh yeah it's time to tackle the nes cartridge myth if your nes cartridge wasn't working and you blew into it until your lungs were completely empty <laughs> Stop it. Blowing into your NES cartridges does nothing. It does nothing but ruin the pins and get them wet from your saliva, thus making the problem worse. The only way to properly clean out your NES cartridge is with a simple Q-tip. Stop blowing in your NES cartridges. It does nothing but ruin the game. I really hope I don't get flagged for telling you about this myth, but video game myths debunked. In the first quest of Legend of Zelda, the map was shaped like a certain historical symbol that I can't see on the internet. 
I'm not gonna show the full symbol, but you know what I'm talking about. And this was technically partially true, but it wasn't meant to be shaped like that certain symbol that I can't say. It was actually meant to be shaped like a Buddhist culture symbol, meaning peace and good luck, not genocide. Hope this helps. Well, I don't know what the game here is, but Nintendo indeed has done a lot. But Atari was around before Nintendo. And although the Game Boy stayed around for many years and almost never died out until the late 90s, the Atari Lynx was in color and actually came before the Game Gear and the Game Boy. And the Game Gear was in color. As Nintendo only had the Game Boy that was in a shade of green. So Atari was pretty much kicking everybody's ass. There you go. Video game myths debunked. Oh yeah, and I'm going back to San Andreas. There was a rumor in San Andreas that had gamers curiosity at a peak. It was said if you looked hard enough, you could find the king of all Sasquatches himself, Bigfoot. And if you played San Andreas, you know how big that map is. So just imagine the hours, days, months, even years of gamers searching that map for him. But you wanna know a secret? <laughs> there was no Bigfoot in San Andreas. As a matter of fact, I have to give whoever started that rumor credit because that rumor was so popular. There's even a mission where a guy dresses up as Bigfoot in GTA 5. Oh yeah, you know what time it is. Video game myths debunked and we're going back in time. To Pokemon Red and Blue, you know how many hours we dumped into this thing. Don't lie, nostalgia boner. There was a rumor that you could find one of the most elusive Pokemon ever to be created, the rare and legendary Mew. Everybody wanted him. And out of all the places in the game that you could find this mythical creature, <laughs> somehow, a rumor started that he could be found right by the SS and underneath this truck. <laughs> Mew, underneath a truck. <laughs> it's just a myth. Mew is not underneath this damn truck. Like and follow for more.